Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Adam here with Retro Pairs, and time for part two of my NEC TurboGrafx-16 uh, video series, I'll call it. Um, so in part one, uh, what I did, I opened up a TurboGrafx-16, which had a pretty good shaped shell, uh, but it turns out the board itself was cracked. Someone, I guess, tried to rip the board out of it without unscrewing it, or I don't know, and ended up completely breaking the board. So it... It might be repairable, but it's going to be an awful lot of effort. What I do have, though, is this TurboGrafx-16, which is not in such hot shape, but it does work. So um, in part one, sorry, as I was saying, I was able to show you that it works, and then I was able to repair this controller cable. The issue with the cable was it just some of the pins were broken off, and it was not getting any signal to the system. So now I do get a signal. However, as I'm going to demonstrate here, the right button does not work. So I can go forward, I can go backwards, cannot go right, but I can go left. So we have to figure out why that is. Um, it could be a bad chip inside the controller, but I did buy this console uh, broken, and it did state that the controller port didn't work. So possibly that was the issue they were having. So let's crack her open and let's see what could be at fault here. All right, so uh, normally this console opens up with uh, security screws. However, someone helped themselves to those screws already and instead threw a big old Phillips screw in there. And like that thing's massive. Definitely not the one that goes in there. And they did probably damage something. So um, ignoring that, I have screws from the other console. Um, I also note that the heat shield is not here, so someone did take that off. This is supposed to be, I think this is the top part, yeah. So this is the heat shield that is supposed to be in place there, and it was removed. Uh, or part of it was removed anyways. Someone apparently decided to cut this off or broke it or did something, but uh, either way, let's take this out. Being careful not to snap this board. Come on. Oh, of course, game's still in there. Duh. All right, so lift that out. And this is the top part of the shell. Um, like I said, it's not in great condition. Someone looks like it tried to pry that apart. I guess they didn't believe in screwdrivers. Uh, I don't know. Um, kind of hurts my head to try and get in the mindset of some of these people, so I just don't. But, uh, yeah, let's flip this over, and let's see what it is that we're looking at here. So, unlike the other one, well, they tried ripping the heat shield up here, but I guess they just gave up because it's still soldered into place. So, let's fire up the soldering iron and remove the heat shield. I'm going to actually do it properly and not just rip it off. Oh, well, that one was already ripped off. That's loose. Oh, they call me a liar, I guess. Maybe they did rip oh, this one here. Let's go, Iron. We can do it. Let's unscrew it from this voltage regulator. First, this does hold it down, so it's going to make it difficult to remove. There we go. Okay, just let that cool, let it go, and one more in the front. Yeah, so that should do the trick. Should be able to lift that clean off. Well, I do have a couple screws here that they did not remove. Like I don't, I don't know why they decided to open this up and 
apparently didn't have a screwdriver. Don't know. So a little chunk of broken off heat shield there. Bring that. Looks to be in pretty good shape, except for the bend here, of course, but we can flatten that out. Let's put that off to the side and take a look at the actual board itself. So this is the TurboGrafx-16. And as we mentioned, we we're having issues with the controller port. Um, was not recognizing, I guess, that the right button was being triggered. So first thing I want to do is test. Well, we might have some bad solder joints here. It looks like someone tried to re-solder that. They may have unsuccessfully re-soldered it. It's hard to say. Let's uh, let's grab my notebook. We'll flip this over as if it were... Actually, it doesn't really matter. We'll keep it this way so that parts aren't being touched. So looking at my notebook here, I was having issue with the right button not working. So right and number two is pin three. Flipping that around, that should be... this one right here. So let's get something in there. Mm -hmm. oh, let's just use my probe. I don't know that I can get into that. Let's see if there's another way. Well, I think what I'm going to have to do is plug the controller into it and check on the other side of the pins because I don't really have a good method of getting into that. So let's unscrew this and test continuity at the connector. And that'll be a pretty thorough way of finding out, am I getting a connection into the console? Okay. So Basically what should happen here is I should be able to get continuity from each of these pins into one of these pins here. Just have to find which one. Okay. So this is one, two, three. Basically I should be looking for the black one here. I don't get continuity. Oh, there it is. So I am getting continuity into here. Let's see, so I get it through there, get it into there. So we just have to find out where that failure point is. So I'm getting it to there. Oh, does this go into the CPU? Looks like it. So 
So this is going to be tricky to follow. Let's see here. So we are one, two, three, four, fifth trace from the bottom. Five. Okay. Seems like it should go into the CPU here. I think this is the CPU and I'm not getting continuity. So there could be a bad trace. Um, I do want to look up the schematic for this just to be positive. I don't want to start, uh, start jumping things that don't need to be jumped. So I'm going to take a quick peek at the schematics for this and just to confirm that this is in fact supposed to go into there. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I have Check the schematics, and I've found where each of these pins are supposed to connect to. So I'm just rearranging everything here. So I've written down the pin numbers and the connection to IC101, which is this guy right here. So what I'm going to do, let's make sure I get this on the screen here. So I'm going to test starting at pin 2, working my way down to make sure that each of these is getting its continuity to the board. So starting with pin two, I'm not doing pin one because pin one is five volts. We, we've already confirmed that five volts is going to the board, but just for fun, where's my voltage? There we go. Five volts, no, you can't see that. Five volts to the voltage regulator. So that is good. So now moving into pin two, should go on to pin 24 of this chip, which is right here. And, oh, pin 22, sorry. Pin three should go to 24, and I'm not getting that. Pin four should go to 25. Pin five should go to 26. Pin six should go to 31. Pin 7 should go to 32. And these other two are ground, so they should connect to ground. So I've confirmed I do have a break somewhere along here in this trace. The trick is, got to figure out where. So it might even be, it might even be a bad via, I wonder. Let's see if I can get continuity from this side of the via into the control. Okay, we are, so that's good. So from here to here, I lose continuity. So I'm gonna do a quick little check with my magnifying glass just to look for anything obvious, but failing that, I'm gonna have to run a wire, I think. Maybe here. So I don't know if you can see this. Let's try and get you as zoomed in as I can. So right here. It looks like you can see some failure point there. So let's see if we can get anything. You know what? Let's expose some of that trace and see if we can't uh, solve this right here. <clears throat> okay, so we get it there. So let's try expose a little bit on the other side of where I think the break is. And see what we can see here. Nothing. So, oh, maybe. Okay, so maybe we do have continuity across that. It looks kind of sketchy, but let's clean that and 
See if that can be improved. You know what? I'm not convinced that that's not the break. There might be very, very fine continuity here. Well, let's see if we can't make that better anyways, because that does look like a failure point. So let's expose a bit of this other trace as well, just to make sure there's nothing funky going on. some flux and then fire up the soldering iron. Nope, that's fixed it, but let's just double check. So, oh, oh, we've moved. There we go. So, I am getting it on the the near side, but the far side, I'm not. So, I guess that is where the break is. Very small, very difficult to see. So I'm going to get a wire and let's fix this. Okay, so for this repair, I'm going to be using some stranded wire. And I'm just going to use, I think, one strand. Just like that. And that gives you a really an idea of how small these traces are and how tricky it is to jump this. I mean, I could run a, let's just zoom out for a second. So I could run a jumper from, focus, no, there we go. So I could run a jumper from here all the way to that chip, but um, that's kind of a lot. It's a long path to jump and the wire could get in the way of things. So I'd like to keep my repairs as small as possible. So I'm going to see if I can do it just directly right where that break is. There we go, right there. I know it's not perfectly clear, but maybe we can get you a little closer. There, and I think that's about as close as I can get this view. So let's, what did I do with my wire? There it is. So let's get started. Firstly, I'm gonna put a little flux and a little solder on this wire. Just gonna make it a bit easier to connect. I'm gonna put some flux on this spot as well. Going to tin that wire. Too zoomed in, so you're not going to really be able to see any of this. Okay, so now the trick is getting the wire to stick to this trace. I probably actually, I need to expose more of the trace. It's never going to stick to something that small.
Okay, so I've got that fix in here. Just give it a clean with some isopropyl alcohol. And let that dry up. And let's test it. Okay, so I'm going to plug in the controller again. Let's get my pad here and get my multimeter. So, pin number three to pin number 24. We have continuity. Make sure we're not bridging anything, and we're not, so there are no solder bridges. So, in theory, this should work. Let's see if uh, we can't fix that or test that. Okay, so got the board connected. Let's uh, let's throw a game in there. Power on. Ooh, that's a pretty bad video. I'm going to come in and double check this RF with a better cable, but why are we so rough? Maybe because there's no RF shield, so it's not really important. Let's try to switch to channel 4. Channel 4 doesn't work. It's still bad, but anyways, we're testing the controller. So start. And right works. Left works, forward works, back works, two works, and one works. So we have managed to fix the bad controller circuit on this main board. Um, so that's going to be it for this particular part of the series. Part three, I'm going to get this all put together. We're going to check out the video, try and get um, a more reliable video signal out of this. And then uh, put it all back together and get a good quality TurboGrafx-16 working. But um, until then, I want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks for subscribing. Be sure to leave a comment below. Like the video if you liked it. And until uh, next time, thanks a lot. We'll see you next video.